And, and thank you everyone for the prayers this morning. Uh, as we continue this morning with our reading in Desire of Ages, I'd like to welcome everyone uh, to this session of our study. Uh, before we start, would like to sing a song first before we go into into our reading. Um, I would like us to sing uh, song number 330, three, uh, 330. Uh, may the Trackley Twins kindly lead us into song, please. Thank you. Three three zero. Take my love and let it be. There's five verses. We'll take the first. Anyone for the second? I'll do the second. Thank you. Anyone for the third verse? I'll do this. The third one. And anyone for the fourth? Verse four. Anyone? Yeah, I'll take verse four. Thank you. And anyone for verse five? I'll take verse five. Thank you. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my hands and let them move. At the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be Swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing Always only for my King, always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold. No tell my will I with war. No tell my will I with war. Take my will and make it thine. It shall know, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be the royal throne. It shall be the royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet. This treasure so store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee, ever only all for thee. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for such beautiful singing. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we want to thank you once more again this morning, Lord, for allowing us to gather and hear a word from you. As we have sung, Lord, we surrender everything to you this morning. We want to recommit our lives to you, Lord, Revive us, Lord. Take everything because you have given us everything, Lord. You did not spare your own life, but you gave up all for us. 
teach us, Lord, to also give up everything for you. We are asking for the Holy Spirit who will come and teach us this morning in our hearts. We are asking for the Holy Spirit to open our minds to understand spiritual things, to open our minds, Lord, that we can get closer to you, Lord. We're also asking, Lord, that you completely, Lord, take control of the waves and everything so that we can hear from you. We want to thank you, Lord, because when we come to you, we know that by no means you cast you cast us not out at all. You accept us just as we are. Therefore, Lord, we ask that you forgive us as we want to get closer and closer to you, to learn your character, to know you better, to have that close relationship with you. That's what we are seeking. And we are privileged that this door is opened for us and nobody can close it. Therefore, we thank you so much. We give all the thanks and glory and honor to you this morning as we continue to search. As you say, those who search me will find you. Therefore, Lord, help us as we continue this search. In Jesus' name I pray these things. Amen and amen. 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 Very good morning to you all um, and welcome to our study. I think yesterday we talked at um, one DA122.1. But before we get into our study, uh, we'll just do a very short recap. Um, this morning, I thought I would just want us to remind ourselves of the powerful scriptures. We are studying chapter chapter 12 of temptation um, in the de desire of ages. And uh, we have seen um, how um, Christ overcame the temptations of um, appetite. We have dwelled more on that temptation. I think the other two are going to be dealt in the next chapter. But this one, um, this is where we have, um, this chapter mainly dwells on this uh, first temptation. And we are told that um, Christ knew that in order to succeed fully, he had to start, he had to commence his work of redemption just where the men fell. Adam fell on this point of appetite. That's where he, he started his, uh, his ministry. We saw that after baptism, he was led by the Spirit. Therefore, the Spirit of God was with him. And we also saw that why 40 days? It was because he was so fearful. It was his, his senses of the fearful result of indulgence, of appetite and passion upon this race. He knew that this temptation would be the man's idol and would lead him to forget God. And it would stay directly in the way of salvation. And he got the victory on behalf of this race. Satan was defeated in his object to overcome Christ upon the point of appetite. And here in the wilderness, Christ achieved a victory on behalf of the race upon the point of appetite, making it possible for men in all future time to overcome the strength of appetite on his, on, on, on his behalf. Therefore, we saw that the victory through obedience Um, the controlling power of appetite will 
will prove the ruin of thousands if we do not control our appetites. And when we saw that when we conquer on this point, if they conquer on this point, they would have the moral power to gain victory over every other temptation of Satan. Let us note that when we conquer, when, if they conquered on this point, they would have moral power to gain the victory over every other temptation of Satan. What a powerful um, inspiration, words of inf inspiration from Sister White, that if we conquer on this point, we'll have a victory of, over every other. And we also saw that, you know, the, the, the enemy, when he said, if he wanted to put doubt so that Christ will not believe, will, will have doubt in his, in the word of God. The voice had been heard, this is my beloved son. And he comes and said, if you are the son of God. And we saw that if we don't ground ourselves in scripture, the sin of unbelief, we will not, we will not be able to conquer We will not be able to overcome any temptation. We have to, to believe. We have to believe what is it is written, what is written in the word of God. We have to memorize the scripture. We have to use the sword of the spirit. We have to, because with these temptations, if we do not go back to the word of God, all sorts of things are going to be thrown in our way. And yesterday, we actually dwelled more on the, we read a powerful statement from the book, which says, in the last great conflict of controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off. But we have to go back to the word of God because in Isaiah 33 verse 16 he shall dwell on high his place of defense shall be mution of rocks bread shall be given to him his water shall be sure we need to claim to, to memorize this, uh, this uh, promise from God we need to make sure that we when we come to that time, we are fully grounded. We are fully, we, we fully know all the promises of God to claim them. And we know that we will be victorious just as Christ was victorious on our behalf. And yesterday when I was meditating, I came across this um, uh, writing from Sister White which says Christ has given his spirit a divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil and to impress his own character upon his church. We will see this quotation later in the book is Desire of Ages 671.2. So we have no excuse of not overcoming because he has given divine power to overcome all hereditary tendencies, hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil. He has given us that power because he himself was victorious for us. We do not have to go on the 40 day fast anymore. We have to be sealed by the Holy Spirit And in Maranatha, uh, two, uh, in Mar Maranatha, page 200, it says, just as soon as the people of God are sealed on their forehead, it is not the seal or the mark that can be seen, but a settling in the truth 
both intellectually and spiritual so that they cannot be moved just as soon as God's people are sealed and prepared for the shaking, then it will come. As we always pray, as we always discuss that there's so much happening in the church and so forth, we need to be sealed and to be sealed, to be intellectually and spiritually grounded in the scripture. And this preparation for the time of trouble, which is just about to come, um, is not going to be something which um, is going to be sudden. No, we have to be intentional. Just like Daniel says, he purposed in his heart that he is not going to bow down. So we have to start purposing in our purposing in our heart now to say this problem of buying and selling when it comes, Lord, help me not to bow. I don't want to bow. You have to make that decision and God will give us the power to overcome. But you, we have to start knowing that we are not going to bow. It's not going to be. So therefore, every other temptation which comes now, we have to overcome. And then when these things come, we are already prepared. I think um, there is a quotation, I was trying to look for it. I'm sure I'll, I'll find it later, which says that we do not have the faith now which we need for that, for, for this great time of trouble which is coming. That means we need to keep praying for the increase in our faith because we know it is coming. I think I, I will look for the quotation and share it on the platform. That that faith, we might, uh, we might uh, be confident in ourselves that we we have it now. No, we don't. Actually, the pen of inspiration says we do not have that now. That means we have to strive for it. We have to keep praying for faith, for humility, for courage, and for strength. So that it will be that God will grant us that. Thank you so much. Uh, so unless if there's anyone who wants to add anything, that we are only going to overcome through the Spirit of God. And we have to strive and we have to make that choice now. Uh, if they are no, oh yes, Sister Aline has got a hand and Sister Hope has also got a hand. Yes, go ahead, Sister Aline. Thank you. Good morning. Um, happy preparation day. I'm not sure where about um we finished reading. Um, uh, we finished at uh da one two two point one. Um, I'm not yes. sure where it is. Is that? The uncontrolled indulgence. We haven't. Yeah, we we are starting it uncontrolled indulgence. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. The 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 line above. Um. Through through sensual indulgence, Satan seeks to blot from the very from the soul every trace of likeness of God. And I was looking at that that line yesterday, and saying that you know. God made us in his image and Satan has really, really tried to blot out God. We, people are having plastic surgery. People are tattooing their faces. People are putting studs in their faces. In their, or man, It says, do not cut, put cuts on yourself. But people will deface themselves. Why? Satan is working through them and telling them, that this you can do. This is your appetite. This is the thing that you, uh, you, you like. Yeah. So he he puts all of these things on people. I've got people in my family that's got tattoos, and I didn't even know they had tattoo until I saw them, um, like their sleeves. And I was I was I told them you you're not supposed to do these things, but people will indulge. 
and people do have appetite because if they get one, they get another, and they get another, and it gets bigger and bigger until they've defaced their, their body. Their body is full of ink. Their body is full of poison. So they, it, it, Satan is really trying to blot out everything that God stands for. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Adeline. Thank you for that. Yes, Satan is trying to blot out, um, as you can, as somebody shared yesterday, about uh, they are trying to make this experiment of, of, um, of creating a human being. Um, they managed to create rates, which are I don't know artificial rates or something like that. They, Satan was just to blot, um the image of God in us. And we are made from the image of God, you know, in the likeness of God. And we are sacred that we should not be putting all these things on our bodies. We should not be attracted. But we know that in the world, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world. You know, people, young people see these tattoos and so forth. We have to thank God when when uh, you have still have young people who are not attracted to these things because you see all these celebrities with tattoos everywhere. And, you know, I, I, you just wonder why. It's because they don't read, because the Bible clearly says that we should not do these things. Yes, Sister Hope. Uh, thank you, Sister Kezi, and good morning, all. Uh, what I also wanted, I think you've touched on it. Uh, it's on that paragraph of uh, uh, the one uh, the one before Sister, Sister Arlene just uh, read in regarding Habakkuk, uh, the prophet Habakkuk. Um, there it says, I'm going to start from where it says that um, to that time of distress, the prophet Habakkuk looked forward and his words expressed the faith of the church. And uh, these were his words that although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no hard in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I, I, I was just reading that and saying, wow, what a man of faith. Habakkuk was a prayer prophet. Uh, he just looked at the state of Israel. And he wept over the nations, weeping over the church, because that's the church that should have had the standard of God and the faith of God to be able um, uh, to be to 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 be a peculiar church. And but also us, as you mentioned, that sometimes we go through the distresses of life. I, our faith, as you have been talking about, our faith, praying for our faith to grow. Praying that our faith may not fail, because if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, as small as the mustard seed, Christ says you can say to the mountain, move. So we can learn that, it, that yes, the times of distress are before us. They are before us, but we have to express the faith we have in God. Pray for that faith to be strong in God. Yes, we're going to see all these things that are happening around us. Um, yes, the bank accounts, they may take the money, they may take the property, they may take whatever they want to take. In Habakkuk's time, there's nothing new under the sun. He also saw these things. They were failing. They were failing, but he still held on. Because that's what the enemy wants us to look at, that the, the the natural things, the temporal things that we see. But yet, this yet beyond 
the temporal things. Christ wants us to look to him who has all power to look after us. That is why he says, when he comes on earth, will he find faith? Because faith, this is the faith that will overcome the world. So may God help us and be encouraged that we are encouraged daily. Yes, we have habits, uh, those things to pray that God through Christ who has given us the victory may give us the victory as well. Let us not let go of the hand that is able to save us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Hope, for that. Uh, I see another hand. Uh, a son desire. Amen. Amen. Uh, good morning, Mother. Uh, good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is well. Um, thank you for those powerful comments. Well, I'm just going to pick up from where um, Sister Hope left today. Um, because I think um, she she has just uh, contrasted the issues that we're seeing. So you were quoting Mother from uh, First John, one verse, uh, uh, rather two verse sixteen. First John two verse sixteen. So the word says, "All that is in the world um, is the lust of the flesh." the lust of the eye, and the pride of this life. And the text says, this is not of the Father, but it's of the, of the world. Now, the Bible also says, as Sister Hope said, that uh, faith is the victory that overcomes the, the world. And Jesus is going to be looking for faith. But we are told how faith comes. Faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing the, the word of God. And this is exactly what Jesus was saying, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that, pro, uh, 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 that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Satan wants us to think that all that we see is what there is that we need to rely on what we are seeing, the material things that will satisfy, the material food that will satisfy our flesh, uh, uh, the things that the eye is lusting after, wants to see, uh, and the pride of this life. But God is telling us that there is more that we might not see, but that there is. And that, so, so you have two sources of things, the world, which is uh, governed by Satan, but God, who provides all things. And he says, faith cometh by, uh, sorry, in Hebrews, it says, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if we're going to go through the time of crisis, we know that all things we need, they are packaged in the word of God. When God says, things happen. So what's going to take us through is the faith. Faith in the word of God. God's word will provide what we need. Just as how the worldlings believe that uh, 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 the world will provide for what they need. A Christian, a believer, should prov uh, should, should should believe that uh, the word of God will supply all our needs. Now, I just wanted to 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 also uh, pick up on um, the statement that Jesus once said. Uh, just to before you move on, there, Jesus once said this profound statement: that man's life consisted not on the abundance of things that he has. I thought that was profound. The trouble that we have, um, which is why God is, 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 is 
is so um, just like how God was. Um, he says in Hebrews, uh, the apostle, that God was was provoked by that uh, faithless generation, uh, the, the children of Israel. He he was so. Uh, can't remember the exact word that he uses. Even Jesus, when he came to this world, he was constantly uh, grieved by the lack of faith. He would rebuke his disciples once and again. Because, you see, we are accustomed to believing what we see, to believing what we taste. But God but wants us to take us to a level where our faith is not in the things which we see. Man's life consisteth not on the abundance of things. This is why Jesus didn't care about getting a mansion when he was here to do ministry. He didn't care. He says, the son of man has nowhere to put his head to lay his head. And throughout his life, he led, he led a life of service. But he didn't lack. So I think we have so much to learn um, from the Word of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Son Desire, for that. Yes, it's uh, it's amazing that He owns everything, and He did not possess anything when He came here. Nothing, even where to even the Son of Man has nowhere to even put His head at night. What what a humility! how humble Christ was. Yes, we will continue uh, reading. Uh, can I, can I, can I uh, Sister Kezia, it's amazing, our brother and yourself, you're saying that. And and uh, in Romans, uh, if I may comment on that, how beautiful you brought it all up, is that uh, he says in Romans chapter 8, uh, if I may read, uh, verse 32, he says, he that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, for us all. Now shall he not with him also freely give us all things? It was a question. Uh, saying that, we don't have to look at these things, but in Christ we have all things. He is, if God can give us his son, what more won't, won't he be able to give us? So it still, indeed, it still resolves on faith Amen. and obedience. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, how can he not give us, together with him, not give us all things? We In Christ we have everything including, most, most importantly, eternal life. Yes, we stopped reading it to it, DA222.2. So we are starting on 222.3 in, in our own strength. In our, yes, in our own strength, yes. That's right. Can somebody please uh, read for us the next two paragraphs? Up to two, up to D A two, one two three point two. Thank you. In our own strength, it is impossible for us to deny the clamor of our fallen nature. Through his channel, Satan will bring temptation upon us. Christ knew that the enemy would come to every human being to take advantage of the adversity weaknesses and by his false insinuations to, to ensnare all who trust not. trust is not in God, and by passing over the ground which man must travel, our Lord has prepared the way for us to overcome. It is not his will that we should be placed in a disadvantage, at a disadvantage in the conflict with Satan. He would not have us intimidated or discouraged by the assaults of the serpent. 
Be of good cheer, he says, I have overcome the world. John 16 verse 33. Let him, him who is struggling against the powers of appetite look to the Saviour in the wilderness of temptation. See him in his agony upon the cross as he exclaimed, I thirst. He endured all that is possible for us to bear. His victory is ours. Jesus rested upon the wisdom and strength of his heavenly Father. He declares, The Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. And I know that I shall not be ashamed. Behold, the Lord will help me. Pointing to his own example, he says, Who is amongst you that feareth the Lord, that walketh in darkness, that walketh in darkness and hath not light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Amen. Thank you. 7 to 10. Yeah, thank you so much, um, sisters, for reading for us there. Um, any comments on what we have read so far? On the first sentence, um, in our own strength, it is impossible for us to deny the clamors of our fallen nature. The clamors of our fallen nature. It is impossible for us to in our own strength and as i read this morning another quotation in this same book which says christ has given his spirit a divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil and to impress his own character upon his church desire of ages 6 7 1.2 so in our own strength we cannot overcome this demon we have we can only overcome through Christ on our own strength it is impossible to overcome And we are also told he, he would make us, he, he, he would not have us in, intimidated and discouraged by the assaults of the serpent. Be of good cheer, he says, I have overcome the world. You know, I'll keep, I'll go back again to uh, Corinthians uh, 10, verse 13. Uh, the, there has no temptation taken you, but such is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but, but will with, with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So God, we can see God is making every possible, you know, we, we can't overcome with our own strength, but we should remember when we are in Christ, we are overcomers. He overcame that battle of appetite for us. That's why he took that, uh, that 40 days, strenuous, and he was so, we, we've told, we are told that he was so weak and so, so thin and, you know, but he, he went through that. None of us can go through 40 days, um, you know, unless God is, asked us to, to, you know, like Moses and Elijah. But if we as human beings um, on our own, we, we are not able to, to go through uh, 40 days of prayer and fasting. Yes, Tucky sisters. Yes, good morning, everyone. It says, and by passing over the ground, which man must travel, the Lord prepared the way for us to overcome. We've got to follow in Jesus' footsteps. He's, he's made the way for us, you know. If you're going through a jungle and somebody, you've got somebody who knows where they're going, you know, and you follow them, you're going to get to the right place. But if you don't, then you're in trouble. So he's, got, he's gone over all the ground. He's, he's been tempted every way that we can be tempted. And he overcame. So he's got the, we've got to follow Jesus in everything. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And even when we go down on that uh, next paragraph, he says, on the cross, 
he was thirsty and we know that he was given vinegar because he was so thirsty you, you know one would say oh it doesn't matter i'll just drink but he didn't drink it he endured until death they were so cruel to not even to give him water while he was on the cross they just wanted to defile him and he he did not drink that he endured even to the end. So when we look at the Savior in the wilderness of temptation, when we, are, when we are struggling, as he says, let him who is struggling against the power of appetite look to the Savior in the wilderness of temptation. Yes, uh, Sun Desire. Go ahead, please. Amen. Well, Thank you for, for those points that have been shared there. Um, I think uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a very um, uh, packed uh, reading. It says, um, I was going to go back to the paragraph. Um, of all the lessons, no, I think we, we read that yesterday. Yes, it says, in our own strength, it is impossible for us to deny the climates of our fallen nature. And he says, through this channel, Satan will bring temptation upon us. Which channel? Our sinful nature. Satan appeals to the sinful nature, to the carnal, uh, uh, let me not mix that up, to the sinful nature, because we are all born and shaped in iniquity. So um, there are things that the, fly, the flesh, the sinful flesh wants to do. Yeah. So, so Satan will appeal, uh, we, talk, we, we spoke to the three areas, uh, that he, the, the three facets that he comes through, the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. And the sinful flesh naturally wants to respond to these appeals. So the Bible then says, we can't resist in our own strength because this is what, it's like going against the current. The flesh wants to watch TV, wants to sit there and, and, and snack all day, go back, take something to eat in the fridge, you go back again. Even when you're not hungry, the sinful flesh wants to eat all the time. The sinful flesh um, wants entertainment. Tennis or football, it clamors, you, you know. You can see that people, even when they are still in church and there's a football match going on with these uh, teams, somebody can't wait to leave church. The sinful flesh clamors for those things. And Satan, he knows the buttons to press. Now, I just want to emphasize that in us, there is no power. Uh, one of the texts that I find uh, uh, as an encouragement when I pray, it's Genesis 3, verse 15. Uh, Sister White has uh, really spoken a lot about this truth. The Bible itself is very clear about this truth, that in and through ourselves, we have no power to resist the enemy. The Bible is very clear. Genesis 3, verse 15 says this. God himself says, I will put enmity between thee, referring to the serpent, Satan, and the woman, the church, and between her seed and Satan's seed. So unless God puts that enmity, there can be naturally no enmity between us and Satan. Naturally, we want to do his bidding. We are ready to do his bidding. 
So we thank God. This is why when we pray, we need to acknowledge our weakness. And we need to claim the power. God has made a provision for the sinful uh, flesh to gain victory. But the power is the divine spirit. This is what you were touching on. God has, 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 has made a provision through the sacrifice of Christ. That the divine spirit will work in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. If we are willing, he will make us will to do his will. Amen. Amen. Yes, uh, over to... um. Thank you so much, Son Desire, is that uh, emphasizing that Christ has given us his spirit, a divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil. It's in us, but when we uh, choose to save Christ, he gives us that power. He gives us that power to, uh, to overcome, but we have to give him the permission to um to give us that power it's not going to do it uh, without us giving up self to say no lord i want your help here we have to give him permission god is not like the enemy who will bulldoze through no he wants us to make that choice he wants us to when we make that choice and we surrender, that we have to work humanity with divinity to be able to co to conquer, to, to, to be able to overcome these sinful tendencies by his power. But we have to make that initial step to choose. Thank you. Yes, I see Sister Dorothy, then uh, Sister Sharon. Thank you, Kathy. Good morning, everyone. You know, as um, Sandy, as I was speaking there, I just thought how true it is when it says that in our own strength, it is impossible for us to deny the clamors of our fallen nature. So what came to my mind that to sin is human not to sin is supernatural. So we have nothing really to boast. When we are walking with the Lord, we should always remember that it is God's doing. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory, working in us, transforming us. And I also wanted to share uh, the, a quote that I found not sure it's the exact one that Sister Casey wanted to uh, to uh, to find for us later, but it says in the Adventist Review, we are not to have the courage and fortitude of matters of old until brought into the position they were in. Should there be a return of persecution? there would be grace given to arouse every energy of the soul to show a true heroism. I really like that. I'm reading from the chat. By the way, I put that on the chat. Okay. Two, if we are willing and obedient, Isaiah 119, God will prepare us for just what we need to face. Isn't that comforting? Because let's face the truth. The thought of being hungry and not being able to buy or sell is quite frightening. It's human to be frightened. It's human to be afraid. But we are promised here, God will prepare us for just what we need to face. But we must be willing and put our will in his hand. And he will take us through. He continues to say, Spirit outpouring. The promise of the Spirit's special anointing 
is a second reason we should not fear final events. Zachariah's promise of rain in the time of the latter rain. Mm -hmm. And that is 10, uh, um, um, Zechariah 10, verse 1 refers to a special bestowal of spiritual grace promised to prepare the church for the coming of the Son of Man. So all we need is faith because without it, it is impossible to please God. So I pray that we will be strengthened this morning by these words that when we see these things, when we see the siege as being surrounded by the enemies planning behind the scenes what they are going to do to us. We should take hold of this promise. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Dorothy, for for that quotation. Powerful, really. Um, yes, uh, it's almost similar to what I was looking for, that, you know, uh, God will give us that strength. Um he will certainly, you know, um, give us that strength. Just reminds me also of, you know, when when you read in early writings, um, it says, um, you know, Satan, when, when those people were going to these texts, they knew that God will give them, even the weakest, it says, yeah, cause the weakest to grow strong and enable them to, to approach the, the rocks and the flames undaunted. That even Satan himself and his angels were, were trembling because they knew that this is this is a supernatural a strength which which they they possessed when they were facing this. Therefore, we need to to trust God that whatever we are going to to face, He's able. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. We can do all things, including. Um, not being able to buy and sell, including being hungry and waiting upon God to feed us, including anything which we are going to face as we prepare for the time of trouble ahead. Yes, Sister Sharon, please go ahead. Um, happy Preparation Day, everyone. You know, our God is just so amazing. And we just have it in the Bible in so many different ways how he is able to keep his people. You know, when Jesus called those 12 disciples, in themselves, they, they did not make a team, but through Christ, he enabled them to work together. You know, we had like um, Matthew and Simon, they would have been two worst enemies. Why? Because Matthew, he was all about the wealth and, and, and stealing money from the people. Simon, he was one of the ones that was like, he was like a little military man. He wanted to fight to bring out the Romans. But through Christ, when he put his power in them, even Judas was able to bring healing and to, and to support the other disciples to cast out devils. So when we look at it, when God gives us a commission to do something, is he not the one that is going to sustain? I mean, look at Elijah. Elijah managed 40 days without food. If we are going to go to a position where there will be no buying or selling, that same God who sustained Elijah is going to be the same God that will sustain us. So what, what's the difference between us and them is that Elijah was prepared to allow the power of God to enable him in those, those difficult times. And what we have got to do is stop finding human solutions to um, supernatural problems. Because Satan knows that if he puts a supernatural problem in our way, the only way that we are going to overcome it is through the power of God. And if we're not praying and if we're not um, empowering ourselves through the word of God and knowing that God, what God's enablings are sure, then of course we are going to go 
and take a mark and go and sell out. And, oh, our children, you know, the same God who gave you these children, if he should take them away from you, will he not give you them back to you on the day of resurrection? And I think what we have to do now is start looking at spiritual things instead of building our hopes on temporal things. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Sharon, for those thoughts, powerful thoughts indeed. God is and is able to sustain us. We should always know that um you know that he is able to sustain us and that should take us through this coming time of trouble so that we will not we have to purpose in our hearts not to receive this mark not to bow down because we want to uh, satisfy the desires of the of our flesh yes hunger will be clamoring on us but we have to purpose that no Christ has given all for me. I'm not going to betray Christ in any way, and God we will, we will sustain us. I just wanted to read this. Um, I thought it was quite powerful. In the uh, early writings, it says here, as these witnesses, as these witness, these are the people who were being taken for um, you know, at the stakes, a uh, time of that uh, persecution. As this witnessed the death of their brethren and beheld their uh, and beheld their firmness and patience, they knew that God and the angels assisted them to endure such suffering. They grew bold and fearless. And when when called to yield their own lives, they maintained their faith with patience and firmness, as caused even their murderers to tremble. See that. So that resilience, you know, he, they knew that God and the angels will assist them. And Satan actually trembled and, and his angels trembled at that faith. That's what God is going to do to us. That's what God, if we remain faithful and grounded. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, son, desire, go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to add to what you're saying there, mother. And uh, it's amazing. In, in fact, it's interesting because um, I was actually thinking um, about the matters uh, before you made that point. Um, so it's <laughs> interesting how uh, that came to your mind as well. Yes, you can see that was supernatural. Um, speaking of John and us, also, we are told that they prepared for the stake as if they were pre preparing for a wedding. Uh, and these were the, the, the soldiers who were giving these testimonies that they were singing. And you wonder, how can someone sing and burn? Uh, 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 it's, it's out of this world. And you can see that this is not normal. Uh, this is supernatural. I wanted to say it's amazing how God works because Satan will bring the the worst that the flesh can endure. And he thinks by doing so, he will bend our... Uh, our he knows that method works, by the way. That, you know, um, just as we see in Job, men will do anything to prevent or to protect his skin. But those who are filled with the Spirit of God, God wants to show Satan that these people, there's nothing that he can do to them that would that would uh, uh, cause them to flinch or to give up the Word of God. This is why our Lord went through the West and Satan thinks, or he thought, he was going to, to cause our Lord to, to sin, even in thought. But that actually made it very clear that he had failed this man. 
So what he thinks is his worst uh, uh, um, strategy against us will be a final declaration that he has failed. And this is why he said throughout the ages, God has allowed his children to suffer persecution. And sometimes some people, they look at that and say, how can God allow his children who trust in him to suffer such cruel death? Because you see, to God, death is nothing. Satan, death is everything. You can't do anything else after he has killed the, uh, the body. So that's why Martin Luther would say, the body they may kill. But after that, they will realize that they have failed dismally because they can't do anything else after that. So it, it's amazing how, you know, we can do nothing. Satan can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. But it's up for us now to trust in God. And when we yield ourselves to him, God uh, through his spirit, who declare that he is God and that Satan is a loser. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those thoughts. Thank you so much. Yes, the enemy will tremble. He's going to tremble because he knows that, you know, um, when we are sealed by the spirit of God, there is no one who is going to shake us away from Christ. We will overcome, not on our own. No, the Spirit of God, Christ himself, is the victor in us, as he has overcome already. Thank you. I, we've come to um, the time we, we, to, to finish off our study. I thought we would finish the chapter today, but unfortunately, we still have two more paragraphs to uh, to go on to. Um, thank you so much for everybody for coming in this morning uh, to the Bible study, for tuning in, and all the contributions and those in the background praying as well. Thank you so much. Um, I would ask someone to um, to close in prayer for us. Sister Como, are you able to pray for us, Sister Martha? Yes, let us pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this privilege that is ours to. Uh, learn about you, to learn about the importance of the great sacrifice that you made, that because you overcame, we too can overcome so long as we clasp our hands in yours. And so, Father, as we come before you, we pray that you may forgive us our sins, and cleanse us, Lord, of all unrighteousness, so that your Holy Spirit will abide in our hearts, and that, Lord, we will work in cooperation with you. Thank you, Father, for everyone who was in this study, and thank you, Lord, for the powerful and wonderful lessons that we learned today. I pray that, Lord, you'll continue using uh, Sister Kezia as your servant to... Uh, expound the word of God. And I pray, Lord, for everyone who made a contribution and who shared their experiences in this journey of salvation. And so now, Lord, as we separate one from each other, we pray that we will not leave your presence, but that we'll spend each moment of our lives with the sense of your presence around us. And that we will be able to correctly represent you uh, to the people that we come across. Be with us now as we prepare for the coming of the Sabbath so that if the set of sun will be ready to usher in your glory into our homes is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Martha, for the prayer. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in this morning. Um, I will hand over to Sun Desire. And, but before I hand over, uh, I just wanted to remind us that tomorrow, I think we have a half-night prayer. Yes, we have a half-night prayer. Um, and over to you, Sun Desire, for the announcements. Thank you, Mother Kesey, for the reading. Uh, it's truly a blessing to come in every morning to study God's word. Somebody said, let us study the word of God. For if we do so, we shall find rest for our souls. Amen. Well, I don't have any more new announcements. Um, uh, there will be midday prayers, as always. Let's keep praying for one another. God's church. Today we are praying and fasting every Friday. What an opportunity to ask God to help us to deny the clamors of the flesh um, as we are prepare for, uh, for, for, for the times that are ahead of us. And um, in the evening we have Pastor Jackson, as always. Uh, this week has been the preacher. This week, if you have missed out, Please do not miss out the last presentation this evening. Let us also share the link with others that they too may receive a blessing. May God bless you, brethren. Have a wonderful preparation day. Amen.